In recent weeks, there's been a lot of consternation about things that are happening at the U.S. Post Office, and people are beginning to worry about things like the integrity of the election. And when, on the first night of the RNC, Trump got a room full of delegates to chant 12 more years, I don't blame people for wondering if their vote will count. If you want to really drive them crazy, you say 12 more years. 12 more years! 12 more years! Because... Trump and the Republicans have been using the pretense of voter fraud as an excuse to make it harder for you to vote by mail, but this is nothing new. For years, the Republicans have been trying to make it harder for you to vote, all under mythical pretenses. They know that if everyone votes, they'll lose, and they'll do anything to prevent that from happening. You're watching the Lucretia Report, I'm Ian, and today, how your vote is suppressed and how you can make it count anyway. Support this channel by subscribing, leaving a comment, and giving the video a like. And consider supporting independent progressive media at patreon.com slash lucretia report. Let's get one thing straight first of all. Voter fraud is a myth. It's not real, it's not something that happens to any significant degree. A lot of people saying that they're worried about voter fraud will point you to the Heritage Foundation's Voter Fraud Database, which tracks prosecutions and convictions for voter fraud and will show you that they have 1,296 cases listed in their database. They don't tell you what the denominator for that is though, but they do let you sort it by year. And if you do that, you'll find that they have cases going as far back as 1982, meaning that the denominator must be in the billions. So even with 1,296 cases, that's still an incredibly low number. The Brennan Center actually wrote a pretty comprehensive report on voter fraud looking to see if it's a real thing, and here's what they found. They found that the rates of voter fraud in the United States were somewhere between 0.0003% and 0.0025%. Regarding voter impersonation, the main justification for voter ID laws, they found only 31 not prosecutions and convictions for voter impersonation, but just accusations out of over a billion ballots cast between 2000 and 2014. They found that in the 2016 election there were only four accusations of voter fraud. Keep in mind that the lowest margin in any state that year was 2,701 votes in New Hampshire. And they found that the rate of non-citizen voters in the United States was 0%. In fact, just recently, the Trump campaign sued the state of Pennsylvania over ballot drop boxes, claiming voter fraud concerns. But when the judge asked them to provide any evidence of voter fraud, they were unable to do so. So if voter fraud is not a real problem, what could be their motivation for all of these laws that they say are designed to prevent voter fraud? Oh, I wonder. Of course it's politics. There are fewer Republicans than there are Democrats. That's just a fact. Even when Democrats lose elections, they still consistently get more votes nationally than Republicans, and registration with the Democratic Party is almost 40% higher than registration with the GOP. So they've made the calculation that the only way for them to stay relevant and keep winning the way that they're used to is to make sure that a lot of Democratic voters can't vote. Take voter ID laws, for instance. If you ask them, Republicans will tell you voter ID laws are designed to prevent voter impersonation, which apparently is a real problem. And under those pretenses, they've passed voter ID laws in some form in 34 states, including Texas, Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, Arizona, Georgia, and just about every swing state. But we know that voter impersonation is not a real problem. I just told you that the Brennan Center found only 31 accusations of voter impersonation out of over a billion ballots. That's a rate of 0.000003%. Also, I didn't mention this up top, but there was another study by the University of Arizona which found only 10 cases of voter impersonation between 2000 and 2012, and zero cases between 2012 and 2016. So what's going on here? Well, maybe it has something to do with the fact that, according to Mother Jones, while only 11% of the population at large doesn't have an acceptable form of voter ID, 15% of people making less than $35,000 a year don't, 18% of people aged 18 to 25 years old don't, 
19% of Latinx people don't, and 25% of black people don't. All demographics, which it just so happens, tend to vote for Democrats more than they vote for Republicans. Oh yeah, and of course white people, who tend to vote for Republicans, only have 8% of people not having an acceptable form of voter ID. In fact, when making one voter ID law in North Carolina, which has since been struck down by the courts, the Republican state legislature there specifically requested data on which voter IDs black people use so that they could exclude those ones. And in case you still don't believe that it's political, look at what these Republicans had to say about it when they passed voter ID laws. Voter ID, which is going to allow Governor Romney to win the state of Pennsylvania, done. If it hurts so a it. bunch of lazy blacks that wants to have the government give them everything, so be it. Think about this. We cut Obama by 5%, which was big. A lot of people lost sight of that. He won. He beat McCain by 10%, but he only beat Romney by 5%. I think that probably voter ID had helped a bit in that. How many of your listeners really honestly are sure that Senator Johnson was going to win re-election or President Trump was going to win Wisconsin if we didn't have voter ID? It's very clear that voter ID laws are politically motivated, but those are far from the only way that Republicans suppress your vote. Between 2016 and 2018, 17 million voter registrations were purged, and a similar number were purged between 2014 and 2016. And sure, some of these were justifiable, people who had died or moved out of state or something like that, that it makes sense to purge their names. But a lot of them, to the tune of millions, were people who were perfectly validly registered to vote, who had their registration stripped away from them and essentially lost their right to vote without anyone ever telling them about it. Some of these were things like people having an old voter registration in the state they used to live in or a misspelling in their name and address, which, okay, at least you can make an argument that that was an accident or something, but some of them were much less excusable, like someone who had a person with the same or a similar name living in the same state as them. I just did a search on Facebook for people with my name, which I think isn't that common. How many Ians do you know? And there are literally hundreds of people named Ian Stevens, and those are just the ones on Facebook. Like our page on Facebook, by the way, facebook.com slash Lucretia Report, link in the description. And sometimes people can be purged for something as simple as not voting in the previous election. And since they don't tell you that you got purged, a lot of times people show up and they think they can vote, and then they can't. Or worse than that, they get accused of voter fraud and probably thrown onto the Heritage Foundation's database to justify even more voter suppression. And naturally, these purges disproportionately affect people of color because of course they do, what would you expect? And now in the age of COVID-19, Republicans are using even more diverse tactics to keep you from voting. Take the recent elections in Wisconsin, Georgia, and Kentucky, for instance, where Republicans used the excuse of the pandemic to close hundreds of polling places in cities like Milwaukee, Atlanta, and Louisville, which, surprise, surprise, is where most of the Democrats live. And in case you thought that was a reasonable health precaution, it's not. Closing polling places only makes the polling places that are open more crowded and makes it more likely that you'll transmit COVID-19. You can also look at Texas, where since 2012, they've closed 750 polling places, and of course most of them are in Latinx neighborhoods. 542 out of those 750 were in the 50 fastest growing Black and Latinx counties in the state. By the way, if you want to help keep polling places open, consider becoming a poll worker. And then, of course, there's the one that makes it into the news, vote by mail. Obviously, during a pandemic, vote by mail is the safest way to vote because you don't have to go and be around people. And studies haven't shown that vote by mail benefits one party or the other. So why are Donald Trump and Republicans pushing back so hard against vote by mail? Wouldn't that just lead to Republicans not voting by mail? And then because people might not want to go out and vote in person because of the pandemic, wouldn't that lead to more Democrats voting by mail and fewer Republicans voting and it just hurting Trump and hurting the Republicans? I mean, that's unless you did something crazy, like if you... I don't know, like if you sabotage the post office or something. New policies at the U.S. Postal Service are causing backlogs, and workers warn mail-in ballots for November's election could be impacted. His administration is making cuts to the Postal Service 
which would cause problems for mail-in voting. The Postal Service is going to take away those mailboxes. The Postal Service uh, started removing mail sorting machines from some of these regional centers. Then there's the possibility that if they don't have safe vote by mail options, many Democrats who live in cities, which as we discussed, might have fewer and more crowded polling places, might choose not to vote during the pandemic for their own safety. Republicans for years now have been on an unending crusade to make it harder for you to vote, and apparently they're even willing to go as far as to sabotage the U.S. Postal Service to do that. But you need to make sure that your vote still counts, and here's how you do that. First of all, elections are run by the states, and states are different. They don't all have the same rules. So what I'm about to say might not apply to everyone, but most states now have early voting and vote by mail. Step one is to make sure that you're registered to vote and that your registration hasn't been purged. You can do that at vote.org. And if your registration has been purged, re-register yesterday. This election is coming up so quickly. Step two is to make sure that your vote counts and make sure that you can vote safely. If you choose to vote in person, you should vote early if that's available in your state. You'll be safer because the crowds will be smaller and it'll make the crowds on election day just a little bit smaller because you'll be taking one person out of them. If you choose to vote by mail, again, request your ballot yesterday and send it back as early as you possibly can or to use a drop box if that's available in your state. In fact, if you're watching this after like October 18th or 19th, you should probably not risk the post office getting it there in time and use a drop box if that's available. Step three, make sure that other people can vote. Register three friends. I don't care if they're Democrats or Republicans, I want everyone to vote. And make sure that they go out to vote. Also, if you can, donate to Fair Fight 2020. That's Stacey Abrams' organization that's doing things like re-registering people who have been purged from the voter rolls and suing states over their voter suppression. If everyone does those three things, we're good. And pretty soon, we'll be rid of the people who made these voter suppression laws and rid of their authoritarian laws with them. Before I go, I want to let you know real quick that the Lucretia Report store is live. And we have some awesome merch on there for great prices. Every single dollar goes to support independent progressive media and we never charge a pink tax. If I'm gonna make this a sustainable business, I really need your support. So go check it out at lucretiareport.com slash store. Sick Semper Tyrannus. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed that. If you did, be sure to give the video a like and leave a comment down below. You can watch another video here and please consider subscribing here. Also, consider supporting us at patreon.com slash lucretiareport. I'll see you next week.